So, hi there, here's Dieter from northern Germany, from Friesland, uh, from a town at the coast, the so-called Jadebusen, which is named Wilhelmshaven. And I am working time after time on the extension and the diversification of ideas and of uh, systemic thoughts as also I am working on my own skills, my own knowledge according to things like, for example, system critical content, media critical content and reality changing practical uh, self sustainability and uh, sales content if you like which enables people to, to sell and trade, and to do sale and to sell and buy and to do trade in a different uh, way as they do right now, for example, through different currencies. And so in Germany we had something like a small movement, a uh, small imperfect personal movement, if you like, where people discussed and debated uh, how to, to organize yourself different as many, many uh, places have seen some kind of awakening according to the fact that they saw the matrix and the system and the society pretty much uh, biased, manipulated and schemed in an ungood way according to wrong money systems, uh, printing money, printed money systems and uh, debt money systems, not gold-backed money systems and so out of this Federal Reserve criticism as something has developed in Germany like a small sustainable personal network which is not a real network which is more a distance somehow people work on the same or sometimes coming together the same content and they debated also things like alternative currencies these ideas of alternative currencies is nothing really new and in a way it is uh, being uh, somehow crushed down by um, the whole push and sales approach according to Bitcoin and according to Bitcoin fast uh, pushing the market, pushing the scheme, pushing the agenda in a, in a uh, simplistic marketing approach way and so people got overloaded with, from my viewpoint, uh, overloaded with uh, suspicious things, negative experiences or negative media, negative press, negative articles to Bitcoin and also with a positive opposite of the typical marketing uh, slaughtering of um, new ideas and so people try to push some things to, to get something like a running horse to, to jump on the running horse and then or to, to get a train rolling and then they invest in the train and later on they jump off the train and at the moment the train is somewhere between uh, 5 kilometers an hour and standing somewhere on the sideway, side rail roadway. So the, the Bitcoin and the alternative uh, content, alternative, uh, not content, but also in a way alternative content, the alternative uh, currency sphere and debate is pretty much uh, stagnating as some would probably describe it like the Max Kaiser show or others and I just saw and this is the reason why I do this video in an episode of Max Kaiser show interviewing a guy who wrote a book which is simply named Bitcoin a guy from Great Britain I guess at least the interview has been made in the UK in London I forgot the name of it Bitcoin and, and the sentence under it the subtitle with a question mark is this real money or something like this I don't really remember that. From my viewpoint, Bitcoin has advantages and there is a reason and uh, another reason which is not mentioned from Max Kaiser, but uh, the first reason he mentioned and the debate has mentioned there, it's, it's like a quarter of an hour they debate and so books are introduced there as the second part of the Max Kaiser show. The first part is done like a, like a media press review and a news, actual uh, stock market news review stock market fraud news, more focused on that news 
a debate, uh, the press show or something like that, the press review show with a focus on stock market fraud and stock market, market systemic problems and so on. And the second part is introducing and debating things and networking with those who are in that sphere from banks, from uh, interesting other fields which are related to system change, system critical things, banking fraud and um, other things like this. And so they interviewed this and Max Kaiser interviewed this Bitcoin the book writer. And he also referred to a guy from Silicon Valley or from, I guess, California somewhere who is somehow a genius, who is uh, part of the Bitcoin founder scene and who controls 10% of the Bitcoin volume, means the Bitcoin, the Bitcoins in the end, I guess, which are available. And so there's another guy then, and this guy, I forgot the name of it, he doesn't want to be mentioned because he is more or less... Uh, addicted to privacy and he needs to be alone, which is also uh, normally even if, if I do many uh, videos and much content, I also uh, see myself not being uh, in the flashlight of media and also I'm not really interesting, I guess, for, for media to be in the flashlight, so there is no danger, um, according to my person, compared with the uh, Bitcoin uh, genius, the Bitcoin uh, icon, if you like, in this case, not Max Kaiser, who also has part in and stake in that, but the founder icon, the more important or the biggest, I guess even, I guess you can say, stakeholder of Bitcoins and so on. And also the brain uh, number one the stakeholder, the brain, the brain referring uh, base, if you like, the brain number one, the Bitcoin brain number one. And so from my viewpoint, if uh, people are going to challenge the Bitcoin scene and they want to positively change challenge and uh, grow challenge uh, this whole thing, which is necessary because if you simply only positively uh, write uh, walk, walk, walk things around uh, Bitcoin like the marketing positive hype things, after a while you don't have any new ideas because you simply and the content base to Bitcoin is limited to the marketing uh, nonsense then, which is not nonsense but in itself is too limited and so nonsense is resulted out of it because people are circling in the marketing push content sphere around Bitcoin ideas like Bitcoin, the new currency which can be traded worldwide and so it's uh, secure, it's anonym, it doesn't have a middleman and all of these things. After a while, all of these aspects and content ideas, if they are really typically sold, if ideas and positive aspects of something new is sold, then it's getting, if only push people are in that and the stock market and the, the, uh, the sphere and the scene is pretty much limited by uh, somehow hawkish sell persons, which is a big problem and damage the content for the whole movement if there's something like a movement and so the movement is cooling down and it's cooled it down and so no one is really interested in that whole thing anymore also as you saw the backlash from the banks which has been discussed and also from ex Carter and others which is for sure the number one reason at the moment for people to be skeptical and the Mount Gox uh, disaster if you like, even if I'm not uh, so much deep into the whole uh, development and the reason why Mon Gox and other things have failed, but there is for sure outer pressure of banks and interest groups against independent, non-controllable, somehow non-controllable, but I, I would still doubt this in a way, not really controllable um, currencies, digital currencies. So. And there's this old debate then, gold is something something physical. So the mind thing on the USB stick, for example, your own Bitcoin key, the Bitcoin itself, if it's mined, if it has cr been created, is not physical. In a way, it's also combined with physical things, with storage, with B data safe entities, but it's not a typical uh, value, a typical currency like uh, like a box of cooked potatoes, if this is the physical, alternative, eatable uh, crash currency, from my viewpoint, uh, the more practical currency which needs to be added to any good currency portfolio if you want to secure yourself against crash scenarios and crash things at all. 
which I doubt will possibly happen so uncontrolled and non foreseeable as the Saudis lower the oil price and for that I would uh, conclude that uh, the crash and the bubbles which will explode are pretty much more controlled because of the lowered oil price which tends to introduce more deflationary tendencies and so on. But that's a totally different story. From my viewpoint, how to get the Bitcoin thing really running, the, sec the vulnerabilities are not really discussed. And so where it hurts, the big vulnerabilities need to be brought out to the internet. That collective open source brain will solve different intelligence, which is transferring its own knowledge to the Bitcoin knowledge sphere, will break up these vulnerabilities. The major vulnerability is not, from my viewpoint, the opposition from the banks. It is an also vulnerability and it's good to attack each of the parts where banks and influence groups have limited or attacked and so it's good to work on these uh, barriers of success, the barriers to be more successful with Bitcoin. That's pretty much good to, to have uh, something like, uh, like think tanks thinking and tanking against this and working on this. But the real challenge is to get the fundamental vulnerabilities, the fundamental reasons why it's not exploding in a good surrounding, and that's the, the main point, it's simply not needed. Where is the need for Bitcoin if you can still pay with Euro, and if Euro is still so much worth that you can buy in every store anything. And the second, and so you don't have to create and wait for the crisis to surround this problem. How can Bitcoin generate an additional value to those who trade and use this as a currency. And so if this is not surrounding, that's the central question where the people do not really get a breakthrough. And so where are the, the Bitcoin internal known but not discussed and debated vulnerabilities? Is this one of the vulnerabilities? Then would be the next question that Bitcoin is not generating a real additional value, practical value, which justifies to switch the trade currency payment wave. And so how can people be easily brought to jump over this uh, whole thing? Why is Bitcoin not implemented on Google? Why is Google much more likely working with the banks? And so you have the typical investigative results. You see that banks are very influ influential, that stakeholders of Google and people who are connected with Google hinder Google to do so as they might do different, even if they are and could be convinced, perspective uh, looking, that there is no way around Bitcoin as there has, no, has been no way around the internet. So the early implementation of Bitcoin then or something similar makes sense for Google or for social networks or other entities. And so from my viewpoint, how to get over this vulnerabilities, these weaknesses, these barriers to, to be successful and well that shouldn't be a very big surprise and so I wonder where and why the debate is not going to the point where it hurts and that's always the general principle and you don't have to be a wise man or a prophet and not, you don't even have to know anything about Bitcoin to see that this is the problem of Bitcoin and it's a problem of everything, it's a problem of my personal life why I don't get my lazy ass for example to do some more sports even if I'm not so grown big with my my stomach or my body uh, full uh, thing there it still uh, would be good to do sports and so there are reasons why I don't do so and so I also can apply principles of logic and challenge even if I don't have any idea a special idea about anything how to do most uh, successful body fat burning activities and in a way I have some ideas about that but I need to implement and need to work on them and need to realize them. And the same thing is with Bitcoin from my viewpoint. People don't see that they need to go to the point where it hurts. So the first, the second thing has been mentioned from my viewpoint. The banks and the things which are binding and also people are bound by always surrounding and circling the problem fields and they don't get to the, uh, to the solution because they don't and they are not free because they are bound there, so they fight the banks instead of looking for the alternative to the problem in concrete, even if it's related to the bank hindrance, the bank barrier, the interest group barrier, which is hindering Bitcoin to be more successful. And so I guess it's even a pretty much 
perfectionalized uh, system power structurally on every local level a done anti-Bitcoin agenda, which has somehow some um, idiocy freedom to develop because people might think that something like Bitcoin, like digital payment, in a way like Bitcoin, and so Bitcoin can be the freedom giving from people in power structures uh, with freedom giving uh, enablement uh, associated, it can be something like general need. So people then try to find out, and this is even a good way to, to, to start, to find uh, the general logic how and why Bitcoin will under any circumstance benefit even as a front runner, a forerunner, which is not controllable in the way that it will benefit general digital currencies and so for that reason it can be, it doesn't have to be hindered and fought and uh, battled on a local level and so people then have more freedom according to their neighborhood power structuring activities which can be pretty brutal, 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 brutal and which are uh, not beautiful but which are so this is not uh, the typical uh, beauty of the new idea, which is then mobilizing the person, but the, the daily battle against the concrete enemies who come out of, the, out of nowhere, who think they can generate a benefit later on for those who work in banks and those who work in power structures and those who are associated with a powerful also political interest groups who combine and are pulled and pull themselves the the capital interest groups and so how can this be overcome from my viewpoint there is reason to to think that uh, something like digital currencies will under any circumstance be part of future life and so bitcoin has a big and huge chance as a front runner as a forerunner and not only uh, be the thing which breaks then the the typical structural barriers down, but also which has a general and natural uh, freedom to, to be developed even if it's against the interest of the, if it seems to be against the interest of the banking industry, the banking uh, clubs if you like, and those who control capital and companies by that. So this is the first thing which needs to be understood and if this is understood and implemented in the personal surrounding of people they can pretty much work on the development of the ideas and content according to Bitcoin and so without a focus on the enemy of Bitcoin if you like which is the problem then according to anything if you look too much if you stare too much to the enemy you're not free from the time viewpoint from the innovation ability viewpoint they are not free to, to, to do the different thing, even if much innovation also comes from fighting evil existing parameters, if you like, of systemic uh, society and payment and trade, uh, trade markets or trade surroundings in the end. And so, what is the second thing then, which is important? Um, well, if you see this video, uh, people need to do more and concrete, uh, better content, concretely working down every of the knowledge fields they may already know, which are the, the leverage of the banks against this in a positive way. And so they need to find an alternative to counter it. They need a way to surround it. And for that, the debate needs to be opened. And for that, vulnerabilities, according to what banks do against uh, Bitcoin, need to be opened up. It need, needs to be against conventional wisdom discussed how poor the numbers are, the quantity of Bitcoin and so on and why Bitcoin is going down and everything needs to be debated without excusing and without nice telling the whole thing and to not let the Bitcoin coin dream die because it will and may not die if it's strong enough and so is Bitcoin a strong story in the end? From my viewpoint it is but and this is the biggest uh, thing is the practicability a problem and because if you're offline for example and uh, people will under nearly 80 percent uh, looking to five six years they will be always somehow online or can always somehow be online and so 
But how to counter this perspective uh, barrier in the head of people who, who are in uh, the system critical and media critical field who think, well, if you're shut down, if you're controlled, if the internet is totally surveilled, if you're totally suppressed, why should uh, simply not be something implemented which hinders uh, Bitcoin data streams to be uh, guided through, uh, through internet provider and a server uh, connection points? So is it technically impossible to stop a Bitcoin data being filtered out by criteria A, B, C, D, E? It is not from my viewpoint. And so you, can, you, you cannot read and, and uh, encrypt, decrypt, I guess decrypt would be the right way. You cannot re-encrypt and decrypt the total value then and the, the information according to the Bitcoin data and the Bitcoin file, but you for sure have criteria how Bitcoin can be understood and scanned by so-called money, uh, if, if this would exist, and I guess it exists, or it at least may exist somehow later on, and I would wonder if it not already exists, to, to, uh, to find out where people trade with Bitcoin at all. So you, you can you, you scan the different data and then by criteria ABC you see what kind of data it is. Is it a picture? Is it hidden Bitcoin in pictures? How can this be made secure and is it really secure? And can it be so and will it stay secure that it's not going to be filtered out if people really want to filter it out later on? And will Bitcoin also sustain if people simply have no power? How can this then sustain? Is it possible to, to apply Bitcoin ideas and principles or digital Bitcoin-like currency ideas without having a network through peer-to-peer -peer things from the principle you have seen in the uh, organizing uh, phase 